So as you can see, we got some rain last night. I didn't happen to fill up my bag. <laughs> So, anyway, back here again, day number three. And what I have done was fix this solenoid. I took this solenoid cover, damper cover off, went in here and fixed this solenoid wire because it broke from the plastic sleeve inside of here. It's got a piece of copper that comes down that engages and it's very thin because this is a newer style starter, higher torque, smaller, of course. And you're supposed to have a double metal bracket right here one insulated side, another insulated side. Well, it was missing that piece. I had made my own. But anyway, I went into the shop and soldered that. So if you ever have that problem or whatever, any of you viewers ever want to see that, how to fix one of these, I would gladly make a video for you to do that in the shop so you can see how to fix this and make it a functional starter. And you don't have to spend $120 for a new starter if that's all that's wrong with your old one. So I've got my solenoid wire already wired up here. Here's the main hot wire. I'm gonna wire that back in, but first I gotta crawl down under there, put this thing in place, tighten her up, and then I'm gonna leave this solenoid wire loose and come up here, I'm gonna get a hot battery and come up here and we're just gonna direct start it right here. You know, so we'll have a hot lead and connect this to the hot lead and it should turn over rather than have to go back and forth with the key inside. So let's get this thing on there. part get this starter lined up there and get it to go all right bolt Climb back up top and get that top. love when that happens when you drop a bolt. Fun stuff getting covered with leaves and trash. But part of the job will be done. Somebody's got to do it. Up under there and get that bottom one again. Not crazy about how this thing is fitting against that case, but. It starts, turns it over to where we can get it to start. That's all we need. Somehow, it has gotten shorter. This is another starter. So 
save our vintage bag there. Well, it doesn't look like it wants to go on there, but I'm going to do something here. Shorten it up a little bit. So, I had to move this thing because, as my lovely wife pointed out, this thing, the uh, solenoid wire and the main hot start wire were on the opposite sides of the starter. That's why it did not show the correct length here. But now, with just a few minor redneck adjustments here, hopefully, hopefully it's going to work. Now I'm gonna go get a hot battery, so I'll be right back. So I've got power on in the dash, everything, but we're not mainly concerned about that. But if all the wiring and stuff is good, from this wire to the solenoid down to the starter, when I hit this, that thing should spin over. So let's see. It lives as far as that goes. Now, let's see if we have got any spark whatsoever. And I'm going to pull this. And because I don't like fire too much, if it was out in the desert, I wouldn't worry about it because, of course, there ain't nothing to burn. But being back up here in the woods with leaves and stuff all over the ground, I'm going to grab a fire extinguisher and a starting fluid at the same time and hopefully only have to use the starting fluid. For all you classic car enthusiasts, Run Savers Garage Advice 101, let me just go ahead and tell you, buy yourself a $20 fire extinguisher. It will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. I can't count the times that I've been working on something old and it goes up in flames. And if I wouldn't have had this, I could not have got it out. Your old shirt beating it out will not do it, I promise. All right, so if we've got any spark in this thing whatsoever, you know what, let me check the oil on this thing. For Earl, again, yeah, we're good. I remember checking it before, but I want to double check. You just never know. You get a hole in the oil pan from rust or whatever, it leaks out, then you blow your motor up before you even begin. So if we have any spark whatsoever, if those points are not, you know, all nasty and corroded, I have not even took the cap off. You know, it looks good from here. Coil looks good and stuff. I don't even know if I've got fire to that coil. But if I do, it should fire up and run when I hit this starting fluid to it and I go over and hit that starter solenoid. This thing should turn over and, and hit. We'll see. Moment of truth. get a test light out and I'm gonna see if there's any current going to that coil whatsoever and if there is then it's probably a points problem all right so I'll put my negative here that's the test light there it is test lights good now go right here to the positive side of the coil oh there's power there and there's power to the negative side. So that means I've got power inside that distributor. Now, <laughs> if I can get up here without slipping, falling, knocking myself out, now I can get this thing here off. Well, it actually looks pretty good. It doesn't mean anything. Uh-huh. We've got fire at the points. Look at there. So that's a good sign. And arc these is an old redneck trick. It's kind of a lazy man's game. You can arc in between the points to try to get it to fire. And if you can get them to fire without putting a piece of sandpaper down in them, sometimes that's a quick and easy way to clean them. 
any of you that mess with classic cars and stuff probably know that trick already but the correct way if you had to get on down the road somewhere is to not be lazy and clean the darn things but now let's see if we got anything at all all the points are fine if the coil's any good which most of the time if the coil's not any good it's not going to fire the points as a general rule of thumb so if we're lucky we'll have lots of fire in just a second don't think it's going to let me get away with it so I'm going to actually have to find me a piece of sandpaper and get down in there and clean those points so that they arc properly which is what you should do don't be cheap about it just get it done like I said previously don't cheat yourself try to do a good job especially if it's for somebody else but if it's your stuff or whatever because the only thing you're going to end up doing is cheating yourself. I'm putting a piece of sandpaper between these points because they are badly corroded. And if anybody wants to see any of that in the content, I can show you how to properly clean and set points. If y'all are trying to get an old car or truck running with a point set up. But this way it will ensure that it will run like it's supposed to. Now I'm gonna look down in there and see Turn this joker over and see if I've got fire in those points now. Where did I put that? Okay, there's the cap. Now I've got nice blue spark in between the points. So that's telling me if the points are firing, crooked rotor button could be a problem too. That's not good. And that's telling me if the points are firing that the coil is firing the coil fires if this thing's got a timing chain in it worth a darn and it's in time hopefully it's going to run now that's the last click I've got fire in those points. Attempt number three. Third time's a charm. Some men will swear by it. It's going to do any action at all. We'll do it this time on the third shot. Pretty much the story of everybody's life. Everybody in America knows three strikes. So, all right. Let's see if something happens. Well, I'll be darn it lives. Let's see how long it lives for. I don't think this thing's got any fuel in it. But it could have. Let's try it again. sure sounds strange with one header on it and another exhaust manifold header gone and I'm seeing black and everything else shoot out of this side Wow. let me get a little gasoline I've got a little bit of that and pour it down in that carburetor We'll see if it's gonna suck up any fuel, but I doubt it. I mean, this thing's gonna sit for a long, but you never know. So let me go grab some gasoline. I'll be right back. All right, so I got me a little bit of gasoline here. Try to get it down this float reservoir here. This is actually a vent tube. Let 
you fill the carburetor up, it has any ports open at all. I figure I'd suck it the vacuum and suck it down. But let's find out. Maybe she'll work worth a darn long enough to sit there and idle. Again. Well, that is pretty awesome if I say so myself but let me know what you guys think and if you want to see more of this thing we can get this thing out and maybe pull some cars with it who knows maybe the winch will work and all the goodies that a tow truck will do so stay tuned and let us know in the comments what you want to see us do with this old truck and thanks for watching Russ Savers Garage yeah. ready